All right. The 93rd Academy Awards. Uh, for the record, if you guys haven't seen For Your Consideration, a Christopher Guest film there, that's what the sound clip is from. Definitely check it out because it just shows how just dumb Academy Awards and, and buzz and all that stuff is. But you know what? I still end up talking about it. I still end up love talking about the Oscar nominations. And yesterday, March 15th, we got the nominees for the ceremony that will take place on April 25th. Uh, let's see here. Mank led the pack with 10 nominations, followed by six films with six nominations apiece. And they are The Father, Judas and the Black Messiah, Minari, Nomadland, Sound of Metal, and The Trial of the Chicago Seven. All those films I just mentioned, plus Promising Young Woman, are your best picture nominees. All right here. What do you think? What do you think of this list, Kyle? These eight nominees for best picture i mean those are the names that have kind of been been going around um i still need to see promising young woman which i'm pretty excited about watching but everything else i think has been on the list i have no desire to see the father though me too i don't know why we do this why do we nominate these films it's just I, so frustrating no interest because i've i've for the last whatever year since college i've pretty much seen at at least all the best picture nominees mm -hmm. and now this year it's like ah, oh, i was doing so good i saw films that didn't make the cut that are in the acting categories i'm i'm well ahead and then i see the father and i'm like how am i gonna see this it's not even out yet like able to purchase it for vod like how am i gonna even attempt to see this one like mm -hmm. but i don't know i might give myself an asterisk this year because it's like this year is just crazy. I mean, dark in the chat is saying the Oscars is bull something. I can't say the full thing, but it is a weird year. It is a very weird, is year. weird year. Um, I will say overall, it's, it's still a good list of films. I'm very excited to see Minari. I'm very excited to see Promising Young Woman. I enjoyed mm -hmm. a lot of these I enjoyed. I didn't like this year. I don't have like one that I like stand loved. out. Yeah. There's no like thing that's like I'm putting everything in this one. I need mm -hmm. this is my parasite. This is whatever. I don't have that here. I enjoyed Sound of Metal. Uh, I think the Charles Chicago 7 gets too much hate online. Been seeing a lot of backlash recently about how it doesn't. It's fine. It's a fine film. Get it out of here. It is fine. I just think, I just don't, Aaron Sorkin, it just rubs me the mm. wrong way. I mean, he just seems like an elitist prick. And I mean, he, I mean, yeah. So I, I can understand it, but uh the film's fine it's yeah. fine yeah i mean come on i mean in, in a year that we in the year that we had in, in the top 10 or whatever okay sure i why not i definitely think it, it should be there um let's see here we, we are missing two slots actually there is eight films nominated for best picture anything that should be there uh looking at some of the lists you know a lot of people expected these maybe if you look at the ones that also got a lot of nominations mo rainey's black bottom got five one Night in Miami got three nominations. Um, anything anything that should have maybe made the, the top 10 of the year? For best picture? Yeah. That mm -hmm. didn't get that didn't get it. Um I don't see Borat. I mean, I don't know. I, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, be Borat, I mean, we'll talk about it in a little bit. It did get two other nominations for screenplay and acting. I mean, the the producers guild. Uh, then, then when they named their 10 films of the year that they, they had four at in the top 10. Um, I guess the surprise would be Defy Bloods not getting yeah. anything. Yeah. But I, I mean, I, I, I'm fine with it being left off, but I can say it's probably maybe a little bit surprising on that end because it did have a lot of steam when it yeah. first came out. Yeah. I just wonder if like, you know, because it came out in June and the, the nominations are two months later than usual this year that, it's like a really long time to kind of sustain that buzz. Um, but yeah, uh, still a solid eight nomination or eight films nominated here. Uh, let's talk about some of the surprises. I, I have a list of things here. I think the biggest surprise of the day, a well-deserved surprise, but still a surprise none, nonetheless, is Lakeith Stanfield for Judas and the Black Messiah. He's up for Best Supporting Actor alongside his co-star, Daniel Kaluuya. They're in the same category here. Everyone has kind of been feeling the buzz for Daniel Kaluuya. He's been winning a lot of awards up to this point for supporting actor. 
but to have Lakeith Stanfield also in this category, what do you think of that, Kyle? Um, I mean, it's surprising. Who's the lead in this in this <laughs> yeah. film? Then that's that's the that's the problem. I mean, I'm gonna guess that because they have to put themselves in for nominations, right? Where they get nominated. Am it's, I correct? It's kind of confusing. Um, I have a quote from Scott Feinberg of the Hollywood Reporter kind of comparing this to the other awards. Uh, he says, unlike the SAG Awards, Screen Actors Guild, where a studio's category preference is automatically accepted, or the Golden Globes, where a studio's category preference is either approved or overturned before nomination voting, members of the Academy's acting branch decide for themselves which category a performer belongs in. So in a lot of the other awards, like SAG and Golden Globes, the studio says, we're campaigning this person for best actor, supporting actor. We make the decisions of where things are. But I guess with the Academy and their acting branch, they decide for themselves. So it's quite possible that Lakeith Stanfield got some votes in best actor. You might have also gotten some votes in best supporting actor. Obviously, he did to get a nomination there. Mm. But he just had more in that category. Same with Daniel Kaluuya. He could have gotten some votes for best actor. Who knows? But um, he got the most in supporting actor. And and in, at the end of the day, you can only have one. Back, he mentions in the article in 1944, one actor was actually nominated in both categories. And they're like, oh, we got to make a rule here. Just because you get votes in both categories, you can only get one nomination total. Yeah. Uh, but I'm just wondering if like, there's something to be said. I mean, I, I, we have to think that Chadwick Boseman, just the situation at hand, would be the front runner for this for this win. He's yeah, he would be in Best Actor. Yes. So yeah. I'm saying, yeah. um, Lakeith Stanfield. Maybe it's more beneficial for that film to have the two in that category, yeah. so that maybe the thinking is that one of them will win because. I think they both gave powerful performances. Um, and based on what I've seen um, of the other nominees, I would say they both have the best shot of winning. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's just a shame that um, I feel like Lakeith should be in best yeah. actor because he was the lead and, you know, get represented that way. And that if Daniel Kaluuya wins, that it doesn't come at the expense of his supporting yeah. act. And you, know, you always worry. We always talk about it. Who knows if it's true, but the vote split. You got two people from the same film in the same category. If Is that going to split any votes now for Daniel Kaluuya, who was the front runner in this category? I mean, it really could. I mean, could. to me, it really could because they both gave really, really good yeah, It's tougher competition now, yeah. And... Yeah, it, the, the joke online is like, well, then who's the lead? If both of the, if both Judas and the Black Messiah, the two title characters, are supporting, then, well, then who was the lead of the film? Like Jesse Plemons? Yeah. Like you know who was <laughs> the person? Because, and I will, I, I will agree with you, Kyle. The Keith Stanfield is the lead of the film. We follow his character. He's the focus of the story. Daniel Kaluuya at points is not in the film. He's off doing something else. He's not there. So I think the the story is definitely a Lakeith story. We see it from beginning, middle, and end. Um, so he's the the lead actor. I just yeah, it's but hey, it's great that he's nominated. Definitely great that he's yeah. nominated. Uh, deserves the nomination. And I am also happy to see in this category Paul Racy uh, for Sound of Metal. I thought that was a, a quieter performance, but a great performance. And so I'm glad to see him in supporting actor. I didn't. I wasn't sure if he was going to make which, it in the top which five. Which one was he in the Sound of Metal? Uh, he was like kind of uh, Riz Ahmed's um, mentor there at the home. Oh, okay. Um, that is, yeah, that is cool that he was nominated. That's good. So, yeah. Um, let's see other surprises. I think another surprise for a lot of people was in the directing category. Um, uh, another round, the director of that film, Thomas Vintenberg, uh, made it into the top five. I don't think many people had him on the list uh, because it's unique for a director of an international film to be featured in this category. I mean, it's mm. possible last year, Bong Joon-ho was in, you know, in this category, but, but one of five. Yeah, I don't know if we're hearing much about this film, right? Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I don't know too much about it. I, I know it's nominated in the international film category. Mads Mikkelsen is the star. I love Mads Mikkelsen. But again, yeah, I just don't think people were expecting that. I think many people thought it was the names we've been hearing. Aaron Sorkin, he's been all over. Yeah. Uh, Regina King even, you know, for yep. One Night in Miami. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I think a lot of people were, were caught off guard by Vintenberg. And it, it's the same thing at the at, from the Globes where it's like, oh, we're, you know, we're all ex excited that finally multiple women are nominated in this category, which is great. But also really sad that like you have to. Yeah. Guess what, guys? In 93 years, we finally have two women nominated. It's like, <laughs> OK, yeah. like nine like, years later, like, yeah, got to catch up. We got some catch up to do here. Mm -hmm. But guess how many have won? I think one. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's <laughs> one. So like, yeah. Um, yeah. So was that Catherine Hardwick? Or, or Bigelow, I think. Catherine Bigelow, that's what I mean. Yeah. Oh, geez, sure. I just did a faux pas. I got her name wrong. Oh, my gosh. The only it's woman okay. director to win. It's okay. I believe. I mean, there might have been one more. I just, I, I don't know that stat off, off the top of my head. But, all right, uh, let's look at snubs. Um, I guess also in the directing category, we, we mentioned it earlier, Defy Bloods with, with Spike Lee. Uh, nothing for Defy Bloods at all, including... A lot of people were, were thinking Delroy Lindo. Mm -hmm. um, whether, yeah. I don't know if he was submitting himself and, you know, best actor, if he had a better shot in supporting actor because of Chadwick Boseman kind of being the front runner. Or I don't know what it, what it was, but a lot of people were talking about this performance. A lot of people had this number one on their snub list. Um, and I definitely agree. I think he was the best part of the five bloods. I think that whole like ensemble, especially with him was the part I liked the most, but yeah. Yeah. I, I agree. I, th I think everyone thought that he was going to get a nomination and it, because he was the best part of that movie. I think, I think mm -hmm. uh, just with that, that kind of those final scenes there uh, yeah. would be enough to kind of put him in this category of this echelon, but I don't know. Mm. Oscars um, are weird. They're weird. Um, no mank for original screenplay. Despite multiple nominations, uh, 10 nominations, leading the pack, didn't get screenplay, though. And uh, that, I feel like that makes it makes it tough for me to believe uh, it's going to win. And we, we, we've talked about it. Is this going to be Netflix's Irishman this year? Lots mm. of nominations, not many wins. And yeah, definitely. I it's think there's something there. It's it, it, it's a film about a screenwriter and it's structured very similarly to Citizen Kane. If you can't win over screenwriters what's what's happening here i guess it seems seems weird and uh i love my math and this year it's gonna be really hard to predict but uh at ben's oscar math on twitter he breaks down everything he has charts and numbers and, and stats but he has had this uh stat that was pretty damning i think for mank is 95 percent of best picture winners have a director snob 95 percent have screenplay nom and 83% have film editing nom. Those are high statistics there. You need those three, you know, to, to have a win, best picture. There's two films that have it there, have all three. Nomadland, Nomadland and Promising Absolutely. Young Woman. Yeah. So is that, are those our front runners? Could I think, be. I think Nomadland is very, very high yeah. atop the list of possible winners for best picture here. Yeah, I mean, we got to see if they can continue that buzz. Obviously, they've been winning Critics' Choice. They've been winning um, uh, at the Golden Globes. Can they keep the buzz going for another month to get the win here at the end? It's definitely possible. Um, this whole year, I think, is just going to be weird with obviously the timelines are screwed up, but like a lot of these films are more accessible. And now I'm sure we'll get people. You know, because the ratings are going to be down this year. They just are. Mm -hmm. They are mm -hmm. down for everything. And people complain about the movies, but it's like, sure, maybe the movies are smaller. They're not the, the bigger films, maybe. But there's no excuse for people not to be familiar with these films because most of them are readily available right now on Netflix and Hulu and Amazon. Mm -hmm. If you have any of those streaming services, you can watch the majority of these films. Yeah. You know, for free. I mean, except yeah. for your subscription. So, yeah. So, there's no excuse to uh, not do your homework this year. You can see Nomadland right now. It's on Hulu. 
uh, check it out. But, um, but no, man, dark throwing shade in the chat. What he Maybe said. if they were actually interesting, we would watch them. I was just going to say that. I was just going to say <laughs> there's a reason that people don't tend to watch Oscar movies. And the mm. reason why they wanted to add the audience favorite is because going back to, you know, Christopher mm. Nolan and mm. wanting the, the edits the right way and all this stuff. It's just like, dude, this movie, I'm going to sit through three hours and you're going to tell me that, you know, someone takes a poop and then that's the movie. It's well, like, all right, cool. What, what movie is that? Because don't, no don't man, Tenant, please. I was going to say it's two hours. Justice League Snyder cuts four hours. Avengers Endgame, probably the winner of the best picture thing is three hours long. Like, you know, okay. as, should, as I heard, should Nomadland star Thor and Iron Man next time. Like, I don't know. <laughs> I think they are technically nomads. Don't they travel yeah. across planets? Yeah, sure. But yeah, okay. I, I was hoping to get a little bit more of the fun nominees in in like the screenplay categories. We, we did get a little bit. I'll mention it in a second here. But normally here is where you get like the, the fun ones, like the outliers, the ones that like, I feel like Palm Springs could have got a nomination here in like original screenplay. Yeah. I feel like it could have, but... You know, but it didn't. I mean, Borat got nominated. Borat got nominated. Borat, the original, was nominated for adapted screenplay. It's nominated here again. I think it's one of the, I think I saw it's one of the ones with the longest title. So if the film wins or if Maria Bakalova wins, they have to write that entire like title on the engraving thing. It's like a rule that they have hilarious. to do. <laughs> and you got that. And then you have like, I think the mo one of the most like credited writers on a film for Borat to be nominated in for one film. Uh, yeah, it, it's interesting. I mean, it's mostly an improv movie, but there is a story there. There is a through line and I'm sure there's a writer's yeah. room pitching jokes and stuff like that. But mm -hmm. yeah, I was excited to see Borat and Maria Bakalova for supporting actress. I was excited to see the sound of metal love. Is there anything that you were excited to see Kyle, any surprises, snubs, anything like that? Uh, I think we've mentioned all the ones that I had in mind, but um I do like the sound of metal. Uh, I really like it. I think it's worth. Uh, I think it's worth a look. I think it's one of those movies where I think um, it appeals even to uh, like just a general audience. I think uh, you become familiar with this world. You get put in with this world. I think it's a really well done film. So I highly recommend Sound of Metal if you have not seen it. Also, I'm a big Amanda Seyfried fan, so I'm glad that she got a nomination. I mean, I have no idea how her performance is, but I just like her. So I'm glad that she got some love because um, she deserves to be in this kind of echelon of actresses, I feel like. So um, we had uh, Ro uh, Rojo 36, uh, our friend Nick Rojas in here. I feel like I've been putting off homework for months and now the due date has been put in front of me. I have no strong thoughts on anything this year. Happy for our guy, Stephen Young. Though. So it's like, okay, yeah, Stephen Young uh, for, for Minari's in here. He's the first Asian American Best Actor nominee in the 93 years of the mm -hmm. Oscars. So that's great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Love Stephen from the Walking Dead days to I think he should leave. He's all over. Uh, he's all over the place. But yeah. um, well, let's quickly bring up here one last thing. Uh, Z Milan on Instagram brought up. Will Glenn Close's performance in Hillbilly LG be the, be the best and the worst of the year? I think it's possible. Yeah, I think it it's quite possible. possible. Because for, for Glenn Close, they love like the overdue Oscar. You never win for something that you should win for, if yeah. that makes sense. It's always yeah. like, oh, we screwed up 10 years ago. You should have won then, but we'll give it to you now for whatever bad movie, you know? Yeah. And She's 0 for 7 right now. This is her eighth nomination. So she could be 0 for 8 at the end of this. We'll, we'll, we'll wait and see. But a lot of people are saying, oh, she was going to win the year of the wife, the wife, the wife, and then Olivia Coleman won instead. Mm -hmm. she's, she's up against Olivia Coleman again. She is for kind of like the, the opposite here. She's now in The Father, a smaller film. Could it, could it, and that's like the, yeah. So who knows? Who knows? Um, uh, uh, Let's see, Glenn Close was up for a Golden Globe. 
Critics Choice. She's also up for SAG. Um, but the Golden Globe winner is not here. And the Critics Choice Award winner was Maria Bakalova. So it's going to be interesting. Are they going to go, you know, with the legend of Glenn Close? Mm-hmm. Are they going to come in with the rookie, uh, Maria Bakalova? Or are they going to go completely outside of it all and do something down the middle? I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. But uh, I think this one's kind of going to be a hard one to to pick. Yeah, this is I the think one it really it's... could go. This is the one that'll cost us the good, bad, and watchful. <laughs> bet, I think probably. All right, here. Well, that is it for the Oscars. We will definitely talk about predictions later on.